Today on WTF, we're showing you how to keep bread fresh using dough conditioners. Hello and welcome to WTF where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. And today we're doing the part two of how do you keep your bread fresh episode. And today we're talking all about dough conditioners which will keep your bread from staling. Now remember, if you enjoy the content, you want to see more like this, comment, subscribe, and stick around for our weekly giveaway which will be the ingredients to keep your bread fresh. All right, now a couple weeks ago, we talked all about how do you keep your bread from molding through the use of encapsulated potassium sorbate. And of course, we end up being able to have mold-free bread for weeks, but that doesn't do you much good if that bread is incredibly stale. So today we're talking all about how do you delay that staling process. And I think where we want to start is what exactly is happening when bread stales. Mm. And that's usually just the loss of water over time. Your bread is drying out and it doesn't taste as good. So what we want to do was take a look at what are the different types of dough conditioners we have, and then we picked a few that we thought were you know, more popular, more common, people are more likely to have it in their pantries, and we did side-by-side -side comparisons of how well they held onto the water and delayed the staling process. Hannah, can you talk about you know, when you were doing your research, what the main categories of dough conditioners were that you found to be uh, the most effective for preventing staling? Yeah, so just to break it down a little bit, there's a few different categories of dough conditioners. So the first in that category is enzymes. So what these enzymes are doing, typically something like amylase, is it's gonna be breaking down the starch in your flour, and this is gonna be making the starch into simple sugars, which is gonna be providing more food for your yeast. And more food for your yeast means a greater gas production. You're gonna have a more even crumb, a better rise on your bread. And so other than enzymes, we also have emulsifiers. And what these emulsifiers are gonna be doing is they are helping with water retention. They're also helping with increased volume and the strength of that gluten structure. And all these things are really going hand in hand together to really help the quality of your bread overall. Um, and the last one we're really gonna be talking about is oxidants, and again, this is helping with the um, structure, that's the word, mm -hmm. of your gluten, and it scientifically, it's with the disulfide bonds specifically, but overall, it's really just helping, helping, words are hard, <laughs> the um, overall structure of your gluten network which is gonna give you that finer crumb. Yeah, and if you're like, this all sounds very similar, it's because it is. So essentially, <laughs> you know, you're getting uh, a better gluten structure, a stabilized gluten structure, you're getting water retention, you're getting a finer crumb. It's, uh, it's just that these ingredients are kind of attacking the same problem from different angles. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we kind of started testing, I think we end up testing maybe like six, six or seven different dough conditioners. Yeah. <laughs> and we end up on three that we want to share with you today, and that's ascorbic acid, lecithin and sodium alginate, or sodium alginate lecithin, whatever order that these breads are in right now. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we picked them was because we, you know, we have some, we kind of want to think about, you know, if you're at home, you're baking your bread, which ones are you most likely to already have in your pantry? Which ones um, are the most, you know, natural, which obviously we're a modernist pantry, we use all types of ingredients, but we know that some people want more natural ingredients. Mm -hmm. So we kind of focused on ones that, um, you know, you might want to use in your in your particular testing. And I know Hannah mentioned amylase, and we didn't have an amylase loaf out today, and it's because I know it's supposed to be do a good job, but we didn't really love it, so we have it here. If you have amylase, you're making oat milk or whatever at home, you can definitely still use it, but we wanted to present our favorites. If you stick around, we'll tell you which one is our absolute favorite, and you can win that in this week's giveaway. Ah, oh, perfect transition, <laughs> okay. So this week's giveaway will be the dough conditioning ingredient of your choice. You can let us know which one you want to try. To enter to win, just leave in the comments below a baking problem that you would like to see us tackle in the future. All right, Hannah, can you go through kind of your process for testing 
um, what the different ingredients are and um, how much of it did you use in each loaf and we can kind of talk about our results from with them as we go along. Yeah, so, and I do just want to make one note on the amylase um, because uh, for this process, our bread was only rising for two hours. Mm -hmm. We think that if you're going to use the amylase, it might be better in a bread that you're rising for a greater amount of time, give the amylase some time to work and really break down those starches. So if you do try that at home, let us know mm -hmm. if that ends up working out. Um, but for these, uh, to start off, we have, I believe, our azorbic acid right here, and this is naturally known course as vitamin C mm -hmm. we're using this in a really small amount it's only 0.03 percent so tiny and I'll just uh, blanket note that all of these ingredients are based on the flour weight specifically mm -hmm. so each of these breads are super simple it's just flour yeast water and a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and then of course they're additives so for azorbic acid this is an oxidant we're looking of course to have this help us get a finer crumb, better gluten structure, as we previously went over. So just in a little comparison, we have our control loaf here. You can see there's kind of larger air pockets, just the crumb of the dough, or the bread itself, mm -hmm. isn't really uniform. And the azorbic acid, we see it's a little bit finer, a little bit more uniform. In texture, it does have some nice softness to it as mm -hmm. well. And uh, then, I guess going over to our sodium alginate. This we've mentioned in plenty of videos before, mostly for its gelling properties, of mm -hmm. course. So it's a hydrocolloid. It's going to be gelling in water. So what's great about this is you are combining it with your dry ingredients and then adding in our water. It's going to start gelling, and it's really helping of back up the gluten structure and mm -hmm. really yes. make that network not firm but yeah, it's stronger stronger mm -hmm. is the word and we actually found that the sodium alginate is really giving us the softest loaf out of all and it has great uniform crumb mm -hmm. um, so they're all nice and squishy what we're looking for these are freshly baked yesterday mm -hmm. um, and then lastly we have our lecithin so this is an emulsifier. It's gonna help us with water retention. Also with the crumb structure, they're all kind of doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but they are improving upon our control loaf over here. So again, just a little squish test. Uh, this one is also a really soft loaf as well. Yeah, so one of the big things and that we wanted to look for, of course, is how long these particular ingredients kept the bread from staling. Mm -hmm. So these ones are all, you know, relatively freshly baked, so, you know, they're all kind of soft. But you can definitely see already this one doesn't have the same squish that mm -hmm. Hannah was demonstrating in our uh, dough-conditioned loaves. And what we found was, I think, you know, once you cut it open, the control loaf staled within, like, well, like a day or two. Yep. And then we were able to, with the other ones, extend it to, like, four or five days without any staling. And in fact, some of the bread were molding because no, no encapsulated potassium sorbate in them before they were even staling. So mm -hmm. if you start combining the two, you're definitely going to get a lot more, you know, a lot more legs from your bread. Um, so when, w because all these three ingredients are popular, you're, you're going to be pretty well off using any of them. I do want to make a note, if you've been watching WTF, if you're using lecithin, use powder lecithin for mm -hmm. disapplication, yep. not liquid because no, no oils. And um, you know, over here we have our organic sunflower lecithin. You can use soy lecithin; it doesn't really matter as long as it's, it's the powder version. Mm -hmm. And what we found at the end of the day, like my personal favorite. Let me know if you have a different one, but my personal favorite, surprisingly enough, was actually the sodium alginate, which I didn't even. That was like my dark horse going in. I was like, oh, I don't think it's yeah. going to be that great, but it ended up being my absolute favorite because it has. You can kind of see here, you know, if we did like a little side-by-side -side comparison. Oh, I'm going to stop moving this stuff. But it has like a lot of volume. The crumb is really, really soft. And even after that four or five days, the crumb was really nice. And mm -hmm. like it, it had this like amazing texture. So I would say that's my favorite. My runner-up would be the lecithin and ascorbic acid last. What did you think? I think I have to agree with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. the sodium alginate really, we threw it in last minute just mm -hmm. as a little test and it kind of beat out all of the other dough conditioners. So mm -hmm. yeah, 
yeah. definitely recommend that. Yep, and there are tons of dough conditioners on the market, so this is only like three out of probably dozens and dozens mm -hmm. of different options, but we love them. We're definitely gonna be making, you know, using them to extend the shelf life of our bread. And again, if you have any questions about this, leave it in the comments below, you know, let us know. We'll have all the ratios in a reference sheet so that you can know how much to add of each one as you go along your cooking process. And remember to enter to win this week's giveaway by letting us know another baking problem that you would like to see us tackle in the future. And until next week, from here in a modernist pantry test kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. 